flow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yes, so by the time uh, this month is over, we'll have for sure our record for most downloads, you know, in a month. But uh, what are we thinking? Uh, well over uh, probably 160,000 or more. Let me pull it up. That's here. insane. That's awesome, Ball. So March, we had 121,000. 872 downloads all those podcasts people out there are trying to help other people and the thing with that is it's so rewarding helping other people it's like you said if you have five people if you have one in wisconsin and one in pennsylvania and one in florida and two in texas that's rewarding enough and and that's where i'm at so like i'm still a kid podcaster i'm still not even a year and almost a year in actually next month will be a year that's insane that we've been doing my podcast for a year but i'm still so small on the scale and the small fish in a big pond but we still get those messages of man you're really like you're transforming my business hey guys in today's video we're gonna hear a lawn care business startup success story from my friend jeremiah jennings of growing green landscapes in trustville alabama according to the united states small business administration in north america 80 percent of small businesses fail in their first five years you heard me say that correctly four out of five businesses are going to fail in the first five years in North America, according to the data research statistics. Now, today's special guest, Jeremiah Jennings, is beating those odds. He's in the fourth year of his lawn care business, and he's experiencing success, and that's because he's building the foundation of his lawn care business, doing the right things. And so, without further ado, we're gonna let Jeremiah Jennings share his lawn care business startup success story, and what he's learned along the way from his mistakes, and how he's built such a successful lawn care business in such a short amount of time. Here's my friend, Jeremiah Jennings, on today's Green Industry Podcast episode. How's your spring going with your business, Jeremiah? It's awesome, man. It's it's weird. Spring is like this. This Cherokee's blowing me up, and I'm like just sitting there looking at myself the whole time. It's weird. It is a fun time, and and it's weird because like we're almost through the spring rush. We still got probably another two or three weeks left of it, but the calls have finally started to slow down a little bit. And I don't know. It, it all depends on what kind of business model you're running. If you're looking to scale and grow, that's honestly then you don't want the calls to slow down. You want to keep coming in. But for my size company and the model that we're running of uh, just a lawn maintenance company, one crew, uh, me splitting off and doing some landscape stuff on the side. Spring rush is, is tough because it's hard to keep up. I mean, I'm not looking to add employees and take on more work than I can handle. So, and we got a lot of that back, I don't know, a month and a half ago. They got really, really busy and we were booked out two or three weeks, but that's finally slowing down. People was asking me the other day, actually, what do you do in the rain? What do you do when, when it's things like this? How do you make money? It, it all depends. Some days I take the day off and, and enjoy the time off and we'll make up the yards and we'll make up the revenue at a later date. But one thing we always do is always try to keep a couple landscape jobs lined up and when i say landscape jobs i mean pine straw install mulch install some plantings or uh, some sod something like that just little fillers here and there to get us by i'll try to always keep two or three of those in my back pockets i never want to like totally clear the schedule because if you do that then when you do have rain there's nothing for you to do at all. I always try to keep two or three of those in my back pocket and it's good for us. It's always worked out and it keeps us, helps us keep a little bit of revenue. And, and for lawn maintenance guys that are trying to, I think, get into another area of maybe they want to break off by themselves. That's the model that I've taken. And I think it's a good way to get into the whole splitting up because it allows you to just, you can go do some of those small landscape installs while the guys go out and do some mowing or something by themselves. Do you have an employee right now? Or are you riding solopreneur? Oh no, I have two guys that work for me. Okay, tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I was just listening to hearing you and Brian said about, <laughs> oh my goodness, that got me. Tell me a little more about that. I know Marty's got to be, he, when he listens to this, he's going to die because that was something, that's one of his transitions. But anyway, tell me, tell you a little bit more about my employees. So we've, I've always honestly always had employees i've never really ran solo i did it for like two weeks back at the very very beginning of my company and i was in school full time and that was some of the most stressful times i've ever had so i've never really ran it it's always been worth it to me to pay the labor to have that done because it's an investment into my time and my health and i have to go out there and kill myself every day so last summer when i messed up my hand i ran three got me and three guys uh, at some point just to keep up with everything because i wasn't at full strength and that we took a hit on the bottom line the, the profit because of how much we paid in wages but i always like having employees the guys that i've always had i have a good access to them because i coach high school basketball so a good labor pool to pull from and the two that are working for me right now one of them is my best friend that i grew up with and the other one is a kid that plays basketball for me so he's come on and he's this is actually
his first summer working with us and he's done really well he's been with us for about two months and learning and growing and him and ben the guy that i've my main guy foreman they're able to do some mowing on their own now and it's cool to see because we got a good baby on the way in september and so when that happens i hope to be able to take some more time off and free up a little time to get out of the everyday be able to work more on the business and in the office after he's here so it's many, been really good. How many lawns are you guys currently maintaining? So that is a, people are going to be like, man, he didn't have a big company. We really don't have a big company when it comes to down to it. The properties vary in size. So I think right now, honestly, don't even know, I haven't even counted recently, maybe 65 maybe 65 or 70. It's not that many, honestly. And people think, why do you have two guys for that? Because we have a lot of big acreage properties. I know at least 10 of those properties are three or four acres plus. Some of them are five plus acres. So there's a lot of, we got a lot of big properties out of those 70. And then we don't have tight subdivision, flat yards like everybody has around the country up north. I see guys in Michigan. I, I always ride Brian because he's out there and they're the flattest yards I've ever seen in my life. Like I've never seen a hill, never seen his mower go over a hill or anything. That's what we run, 6570. And we were, we had more than that. But this year I dropped about 20 last season because uh, we were trying to tighten our routes up. And so that we're still rebuilding from that. Next year, I would like to get up to back between 85 or 90. So that's lawn maintenance clients is really who we're targeting right now because I want to grow that side of things to be able to to have a full schedule for the guys to go out and mow by themselves. Jeremiah, please tell me a little bit more about your experience uh, working with Gulf Coast Bookkeeping and how that's been to understand your numbers better as you are growing this business. Oh yeah, Gulf Coast has been awesome. It's uh, it's one of those things that I feel like everybody should have a bookkeeper. And it's, I didn't have it for a long time. Last year I had uh, my accountant do my bookkeeping and it wasn't the best process that we've ever seen. And so still didn't get things the way I wanted it. I thought I was doing the right thing last year, but it turns out there's, it just, they didn't do it good, good enough for what we needed. But this year I turned to Megan and Joey back in January and they did a cleanup and then got me on track for 2022. And books are cleaner than they've ever been. It's very simple. They walk you through the process of what, everything they need. And you do some simple tasks for them to help them keep it up. And they do a lot of the tasks for you. So it's definitely well worth your money investing in, in a company like that. Do you use QuickBooks online or what's like your setup with your business checking accounts and your accounting software and getting it synced up with them? What's kind of been your workflow? Yeah, so we do use QuickBooks online. So we use Yardbook their beta version they're still in like the beta process between syncing yard books and yard book and quickbooks so we're in the process of getting that synced up to really help with our revenue uh, to be able to show revenue better than uh, what we are now in our profit and loss statements and, and everything like that. But yeah, we use QuickBooks and it's been fine. Megan is extremely good at QuickBooks. I know you know when you sit down and go through your meetings every month, she's sitting there going through transactions and categorizing and it's like, man, I couldn't do that. It would take me all month to do what she does in 30 minutes. Yeah, it's incredible. And real quick shout out to Jobber Guys. I talked to Megan actually, and she was telling me because she works with every business, it doesn't matter what CRM you use, she'll onboard you. Yeah. She personally told me, she's like, Jobber's my favorite to work with because they connect with um, QuickBooks so seamlessly. And yeah. All that back end stuff is really built up at Jobber. So I wanted to make sure I give credit to where credit is due uh, to our friends over there at Jobber. How many uh, Know Your Numbers monthly meetings have you done with Megan and Jobber? We've done three. We've done three okay. so far. Yeah. So it's been awesome. We're It's getting fun now because we're really getting into like the meat and potato. We got through the figuring out what the statements mean and all this stuff. And we were still like working on transactions and figuring out where they go and, and just kind of her figuring out our company and how we do things. Now that we've gotten all that kind of figured out and out of the way, the I think the next meeting is going to be really fun getting to really dive into the the statements and the reports from the month and, and see how we've done and, and what we need to do better next month. Yeah, I wrote this quote down. Let me pull it up here. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And so what happens is when we get our business operating smoothly, it's like everything starts to accelerate. Mm -hmm. And for those of you guys who don't know the lingo we're talking here with the bookkeepers we use once a month, we meet with Megan and Joey and go over and, and you're only three months in wait till you get yeah. 12 wait till you get 12 of these meetings under your belt you'll be like wow you'll, you'll just feel like your shoulders will go back a little bit and you'll just be like so much confident when you go out and quote jobs and things like that because you'll know your numbers even better but you each month we go over our profit and loss statement which every small business owner needs to be intimate with your profit and loss statement mm -hmm. and the problem is jeremiah i gotta be very delicate how i say this in radio they told me never alienate your audience so but not i don't know 80 percent of my audience doesn't have this clean so I'm, i don't know how to not alienate 
pretty much everyone listening to me right now, but not all profit and loss statements are equal because yeah. if you don't have your numbers organized, I'll give you an example, Jeremiah. If you don't pay yourself as an employee or, or as, as the owner of the company, if you don't mm -hmm. pay yourself and you have all this income coming into your business and then you have all the outgo going out, your, your equipment, your truck and your storage unit and all that stuff coming out. And then some guys are like, oh, well, my profit margin's this. Uh, you know, this is what's left over. This is profit. Yeah. But you never even paid yourself yet. And yeah. so it's good to have bookkeepers who are actual professional that, especially Joey, he'll get on me personally and be like, all right. Oh, yeah. Here's your salary. And uh, I pay myself the same amount now every single month. Uh, first of the month, I just cut, you know, get a check for this amount. So that way, when I look at the profit and loss statement, my numbers are true. Yeah. I know the true profit of my business. And I basically am an employee in my business as well as the owner. Now I can take an owner's distribution, you know, at the end of the year, whatever, to celebrate the real profits. But anyway, you go over to profit and loss statement, you go over the statement of cash flows, and then you go over your balance sheet. It's been life changing for me to have basically they're my CFOs. They're um, looking in my business and they see, they don't have emotions connected to it like us. They just see what story the numbers tell. Yeah. And then give you feedback of, of how to make those adjustments. Yeah, and I'm excited for what they have rolling out for the guys out there that aren't to the point where they need a full-time bookkeeper. The stuff they're going to be rolling out here in August and I think in the fall sometime is what they said when they came on our show and, and talked about it is. And they talked about it on yours as well. I, so you can go back and listen to the episode with them and, and they kind of go into it more. But talking about the guys that are maybe the firefighters or the police officers that are just part time, maybe fifty, seventy five hundred thousand revenue, they're gonna offer like a more entry level service for them to help get them get their books clean as well. So even if you don't wanna pay the higher full service bookkeeping rate, uh, they can still help those guys out as well. Yeah, that's super cool. And uh, they're also doing like, if you can't pay them every month during the winter, they're offering where you can pay during the on season. You yeah, know, nine months season, payment nine plan. Months. Yeah. So anyway, it's really cool to hear that you're working with them and it's helping you understand uh your business better jeremiah so yeah for sure i'm excited man how's the green industry podcast doing let's talk about the green industry podcast that's i mean i have record breaking numbers coming this month correct yes so by the time uh this month is over we'll have for sure our record for most downloads you know in a month but uh what are we thinking well uh, well over uh, probably 160,000 or more. Let me pull it up. That's here. insane. That's awesome, Ball. Thanks. I'm logging in right real quick here, and I'll give you real numbers in uh, real time. So March, we had 121,872 downloads. And again, Jeremiah, which is this is helping a lot of people. Like, it's just so cool. If, you know, if we got to help five guys out there, like one guy in Wisconsin, one guy in oh, Illinois, yeah. one guy in Arkansas, one guy in Florida, and our buddy Caleb up in Pennsylvania, that, I mean, that'd be rewarding. But the fact that there's even more people tracking and trying to build a profitable business, it's, it's exhilarating. It gets, it's contagious. It's fun. April, 142,552 downloads. And in May, and we're, we're recording this on the eve of Memorial right Day weekend. End. Yeah. This yeah. will come out in June. We're already at 132,000 and we still got, a, you know, almost a week left of the month. So uh, it's pretty wild, man. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. But hey, man, you put the work in and, and you see what happens and you're faithful and the Lord blesses you and takes care of you. And that's what everybody's out there going to realize is like you're not an overnight success. It's something that you got to put the work in, whether it be social media or your real lawn maintenance company or whatever company you run. Yeah. And I'm reading an audio book. Well, I'm listening to an audio book right now. 17 hours long, Brian, if you're listening. Fullerton's messing with me for my book, audio book being four <laughs> hours long. This audio book 17 hours long. It is so good. It's called Thou Shall Prosper uh, by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Mm. And he shares, why are Jews disproportionately wealthy? Like, they, they're less than 1% of the United States population. Way less than 1%. Yeah. On the Forbes 400 list, Forbes has a list of the top 400 richest dudes in the world. And they only have less than 1% of the population. So how many of the Jews do you think would be on the, the 400 list, Jeremiah? Yeah, maybe one. Probably not even one, though. Yeah, or four. If you go by the percentages, like if they... Yeah, I guess that would be right. Four, yeah. would be four. Yeah. So they have like 60 or 80. Like they, they take up like, they have so much wealth. That's insane. Wow. And so Rabbi Daniel Lappin was like, he wrote 10 principles of why Jews are so wealthy. And it's the way they think and the way they're grown up 
and trained. And uh, anyway, I'm on like chapter four right now. That's my second time. Actually, it might be my third time, but I'm really intentionally like listening to it again because I want to prosper. I want to succeed. I want to excel. And one of the things I'm really learning is you need to really enjoy what you do. And with this podcast, like I enjoy getting to talk to you, Jeremiah. I enjoy getting yeah. to catch up with you. And it's, yeah. it's fun for me. Like we would do this if there wasn't a podcast, you know, we got to FaceTime I've, or, you know, come hang out with you and have dinner and, and for sure hang out or lunch. Like we're doing that stuff anyway, off air, you know, hopefully me, you and Jason will grab lunch or dinner or something. But what if we... And, and we'll have a great time. What if there's microphones that could like pick up our conversation and other yeah. people could join with us? And so we're building this community and I'm just having a blast. Like it's, it's so much fun. Cause when you have jobs that you don't like, my, we used to work at Carabos and I just didn't like it. Like it'd be, I'd be playing NCAA football before I'd go in, you know? And, and I'm like, Oh, I gotta go play. I gotta go, gotta go to work, you know, and yeah. like, go in there and I, you know, just kind of not really enjoying it. I get off at 10 30 at night. I'm like, God. What am I doing with my life? You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, and then that sounds. I mean, you're working a job at that point, and and it's and even you can you can take that into your if maybe you don't do social media or podcasting or whatever, but you're just doing your normal maintenance company or whatever it is. You you can make t-shirts, whatever it is. If you enjoy what you're doing, you're creating a career and a lifestyle for yourself, and you're creating a process for you to enjoy the way you live your life, not hate everything you wake up and do every day i was watching a video earlier today and it was this it was a couple that just rents cars on turo that's all they do is rent cars they have like 17 or 18 cars on turo and they're making like 200 grand a month doing it and so it but they love it they wake up every day and they they love getting to go move their cars around and get their cars cleaned and you find something that works for you that you enjoy and it's not a job that it's not a job going to carabas for you was a job and that's why it was not enjoyable right but it's the green industry podcast is not a job it's you're creating a career and a change yeah. people's lives yeah, that's exactly transforming people's lives, changing people's yeah. lives. And this isn't from Thou Shall Prosper now. I'm get, I'm mixing into something else I heard. I, I'm always digesting information, listening to podcasts, yeah. audio books, and things like that. But this guy was saying that your pain point will often be where you find your calling. And so mm -hmm. my pain point was when I was in year five of my business, I was hanging on life support. This was yeah. way before I found Joey and Megan. This was way before I knew my numbers. I knew my worth. I, I I wasn't charging what I was worth. I was all over the place. And my business really was failing. I just didn't quit because I had Carabas. I had a radio station. I had other income. So really that income was paying my bills mm -hmm. while my was stumbling and fumbling with my business. Just like I like podcasting, I like landscaping and specifically real mowing. I like, I, I used to have a customer named Randy and I would love like to go to Randy's yard and I would be like, dude, I, I even thought to myself one day, I was like, I would do this for free. I would never tell him that because I charge them a lot. But he, Randy had like the nicest yard in this fancy country club. And it was just like, you know, my first few weeks, it was like, I was afraid to like walk around. Everything was so immaculate and perfect. And like, I got to manage this. I got to take care of this. And so yeah. that's rewarding. This show's rewarding. And I took my passion for, you know, creating a beautiful outdoor space with helping people with the business side of things. Cause 95% of guys that are in this industry, they love the technician part of it. They love mm -hmm. chopping down a tree or mowing grass or putting in a stone patio paver. You guys have different flavors. I, you know, I don't like trimming bushes, for example. I despise Oh, them. don't even get me started on bushes. Well, yeah, you can uh, your fingers off, but. Well, aside from that, I just hate trimming bushes. I, I will look a job and turn away if it's got too many bushes. Yeah, and that's that's important. That's a whole nother story for another day. But when I was starting off, I wasn't even paying attention to yeah. the holly bushes. And there's certain bushes that really get a lot of growth. So that's a whole nother Lord story. Pedlums. Or, oh man, lore pedlums. Don't even get started. But I love mowing. Like I love the, I love it putting down an edge and mowing, oh, yeah. and making it look nice. Like that's, that's what it is. So good. Well, and you're, you're helping the customer. That's the thing. You're helping the customer have a great yard that they're going to be proud of. That's the overall thing that I think we need to talk about here is, is the point of the green industry podcast, Florida Unfiltered, the, the kid contractor, the growing green, whatever podcast out there, else our media all those podcasts people out there are trying to help other people and the thing with that is it's so rewarding helping other people it's like you said if, if you have five people if you have one in wisconsin and one in pennsylvania and one in florida and two in texas that's rewarding enough and and that's where i'm at so like i'm still a kid podcaster i'm still not even a year in, almost a year in actually next month will be a year that's insane that we've been doing my podcast for a year but i'm still so small on the scale and i'm a small fish in a big pond but we 
still get those messages of, man, you're really like, you're transforming my business. Got one the other day that said, I'm going full time after listening to the podcast. It's really helped out a ton. Thanks for the content you put out. And it's not one of those things when people get on and talk about when Brian gets on and you get on and you have huge audiences. And I don't want people to get caught up thinking that y'all are just bragging about yourselves because I'll be honest, there was a point when I would think that about people who had success and I had the wrong outlook on that. I had the wrong, it was looking at it from the wrong angle. The reason that you're excited and the reason that you're happy and the reason that you can talk about having big numbers and big audiences is because that's how many people you're helping you're helping them take their business to the next level. We are helping people. I'm helping somebody go full-time and get out of their job that they hate, but they're going full-time into a business as a business owner and making their company and turning it into a career where they can change the family tree of their family. That's something that you need to talk about. And even if you don't do this stuff, if you don't produce content or whatever you want to call it, if you're just a lawn maintenance company and you get out there and you mow grass, you trim bushes, and that's what you like, that's what you enjoy, then do it to help other people. Do it to help the customer have the right attitude. Don't do it just to make a dollar at the end of the day. Do it to say, hey, I want to make this customer proud of their lawn to put it Maybe they want to enter into the our local city here, just released the yard of the year and the nicest turf of the year and the most colorful uh, plants of the year and all those things that go along with that. And so if you are that guy who just wants to go out and, and do the task and you want to tr- cut the trees and trim the bushes, that's fine. But do it with the attitude of I'm helping this homeowners and maybe they don't have time. Maybe maybe it's an elderly person. They can't do it. Look at it with that view of, and that point of uh, that point of view of we're not just doing it to make a dollar, but we're doing it to help these help these homeowners out. Yeah, totally. That's really good, Jeremiah. And I'd encourage all y'all this audio book. It's so good. It's called Thou Shall Prosper by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. It goes along those lines of you get to serve people and the more people you serve and the better you serve them, they'll reward you with money. Yeah. With money as, as yeah. a way to say thank you. you. My yard looked great. Thank you, Jeremiah. And, and these win-win relationships where we have something to give to the world and they'll appreciate it by paying us money. And in a way, it's like how much money you have is how many people you serve. Like how well, if you don't like your financial situation, if you're like, man, I feel like I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. I don't like the amount of money in my checking account. Well, we need to serve more people. We need to, yeah, we need need to, to add help value. More people. Yeah. To more people and if we're, we're willing to, to really serve people well you know fine-tune our pricing and our skill and our the way we do it he shared an example where he flies a lot and he goes to new york there's one specific shoe shiner that this guy has such a servant's heart and he he shines the shoes so excellent and he'll get off the plane and it doesn't matter if he has to go to the whole other side of the jfk airport he'll go to this one specific guy because this guy serves he does such a great job cleaning the shoe and he has such a buoyant attitude and it's such a pleasurable experience and he gladly gives the guy a big tip and like it's, that's the way business is supposed to be you know we have to serve people well and with this podcast back to the pain point thing when i was out mowing and struggling in 2013 2014 2012 youtube was just starting to get some content out there very slowly with like greg chisholm and keith kalthus blake albertson and naylor there's a few guys starting to share a little bit about pricing and you know the tips and tricks that that we take for granted that we share on our shows all the time back then this stuff wasn't really out there and, and everyone's mean mugging each other in atlanta like you go to the quick trip and guys are like don't talk to the competition. Like everything's yeah. hush hush secret. What I was doing is I, was, I would listen. When I say I listen to audiobooks and podcasts all the time, I'd listen to the Dave Ramsey show. He put out three podcasts a day. Yeah. Um, so I'd listen to all of them. Three podcasts a day? Well, he does a three hour radio show. And so, so he just splits them up into segments. Splits them up into yeah. three 40 minute segments. They, they trim off some of the commercials that they play on the YouTube stream or whatever, but I would always be current. So it was like, I was already in the habit. I, I listened to all three of those. And then he had another podcast called Entree Leadership that used to be hosted by Ken Coleman. I, was, I haven't actually listened to that in a few years, but then I would listen to that one. And I, I was digesting all this content, but I, and with business content, some of it's like good. And some of it's like, I just wasted my time. Like I already, mm-hmm. whatever. But I was like, what I really want is just how cool would it be if someone was talking about the lawn business, the landscaping business, like getting into the nooks and crannies of what I'm doing. And that didn't really exist. Uh, Julio Tomei was putting out like one episode a week and doing a good job being consistent with that. Dan Genetic was like one every three, we randomly pop off. But but I was like, I want to eat, listen like five or six a day and it just wasn't out there. And so it was such a blessing for me to get to be like, you know what? I can solve a problem. I can, I might not have all the answers. I'm not going to claim like I'm the expert of, you know, here's everything you need to know, but I, I could at least 
start interviewing Brian and Caleb and the various guests I've had on the show, John Pajak about numbers. I was like, man, I know enough people that are pretty smart. And I can at least start with them. And then what happened after I interviewed them, it's like, Brian's like, oh, well, you should interview my friend, Troy Clog. Hey, Jack's like, oh, let me introduce you to Jonathan Potashnik and the Lawn Care Millionaire. And then, you know, they, everyone like seems to know someone else is smart. And yeah. So it's just evolved to now I'm having guests on the show. Uh, like uh, James Mansky, the guy has a, does 3.9 million. I always mess his numbers up and he, he humbly corrects me. But I think he does like 3.9 million a year, 40, 49 employees and, and getting to learn from these types of folks. And it's fun, man. I, it's serving people. It's helping people. And, and it's like, I can't even explain to Jeremiah of what, how more sharp my business skills are now than when I started the podcast. And it's just from talking to you guys. And, and oh yeah. Just yeah. from listening. Some of the, I, mean, I agree. That's all. I mean, I, I love interviewing people because I like listening and I like learning and helping and implementing stuff in my own business. So it's, it's fun to listen to, to all the great guests out there that you have on and all the great guests that we all get to hang out with and talk to cool man well i'm planning on coming out there twice in june um one to to shoot some content with jason i've been doing a youtube channel where i've been we've been going out and just doing these makeovers so what do you yeah think, what do you think about all that man i i loved them especially this the snake one when when i saw the snake one, i was like come on paul you got i can't believe you fell for it i mean that's like the most basic dollar general yellow curled up snake I've ever seen in my life. But it was good. I was glad Jason did it and he pulled it off pretty well. It was he hit it pretty well and you know, your reaction was very, very genuine. So it was it was funny seeing Jason's reaction to you. That was that was one of the funniest things about it. Cause you you know we we all love Jason. Jason's hilarious and his reaction to you had me had me dying. So it was it was a good one. And I actually y'all doing some good stuff, helping people out getting their grass mode. So hopefully YouTube does well with that. Yeah, hopefully. I haven't been getting the views. The Juggernaut and uh, Al Blades and these guys, man, they get big views on these videos. But that, we're, me and Jason are trying, man. We're having fun, though. Like I told him I had so much fun that day. We went out and we did like four yards in one day. And oh, yeah. It was a blast. And we did them all for free, too. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right. You know, so yeah. here we go, Jason. I, <laughs> yeah. The business side of me is like, ah. I yeah, don't know, but you just make, that's when you just make Jason pay for the gas, and then you're good. As long as Jason, he, did, he didn't fuel. pay for the gas. He did oh, cook you, me. His wife cooked a delicious dinner at the end of the day. You had the old Toro battery power weed eater, so I guess that you don't really need fuel for that. But had is it still running after the creek? No, I dropped it in the creek. So did, it just, did it bite it, the Did it bite the dust? It's struggling. It, it, sometimes it will start and then it's just like man but the funny thing is is toro sent it to me to make a review video <laughs> so, <laughs> i don't know i sent the link i emailed them the link of the, like the video where it fell in the creek and they just ghosted me they didn't respond so i'm like they probably heard you laugh and it was like yeah this dude's not getting another one <laughs> uh, that might have gone i love toro too that's the thing i love toro so it's like i get a they send me free stuff to review it i drop it in a creek and don't even make a review video so well i mean that's real life you could make a review and said hey it worked great until it fell in the creek just don't drop in the creek yeah i did say something kind about it before like moments before i was like this is actually pretty good weed yeah you're like this is pretty power. good yeah i heard that um, i was skeptical i just i love echo i love gas powered i i love gas powered and, yeah and, and so anyway this whole battery thing i'm so reluctant but it's what's going to happen in the future so it's like they're not going to ask my opinion you know it does, it's going to move right. forward where this thing is just going to be the new norm and yeah. so i think we have to just start preparing for that now if you're in california you're in a whole other situation like the timers clicking like they have legislation on the books that in like a year and a half or something they have to use that so mm -hmm. we're in alabama that's not happening anytime soon in georgia in south carolina all of us down here wait it's gonna be a long time before we get to that yeah we we shall see but um thankfully i still got my my gas powered echo i got a 2620 weed eater and thick edger from them and uh just sent me a pb 9010 blower most Good powerful night. blower in the I world start making some videos then i'm gonna bring it out i'm gonna bring it to alabama Okay, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm actually excited. I've never used the the uh, the 8010 or 9010. 9010. I had 90, an 8010 yeah. and it got stolen. Yeah, I'm excited. So, I'm excited. I might have to throw that on and use it for a yard or so. Yeah, definitely. Maybe uh, I'll touch base when I'm headed out your way. Maybe you know, maybe I can come. I'll work. bring the old John Deere's over and put them put them to work on the overgrown yard. Would you get in be a special guest in our videos or something? Oh yeah, we oh yeah, we'll be a special guest. I'll come in there with the deer and just tear everything up. We'll have a good we'll have a good old time. Okay, yeah, let's do that, man. I'll try to get caught up on the front end of the week because i'm, I'm yeah. coming the back end of the week and uh, of course you come the week after we haven't worked all week long so we're gonna be working till eight o'clock get Saturday. out there and hustle grind it out and i'll probably be there on thursday friday maybe even saturday yeah yeah we'll figure something out man that'd be fun is there anything we're leaving out that you want to share with my audience jeremiah <laughs> 
No. I love in the raccoon eyes. Can definitely tell you just got back from the beach. You had sunglasses on out there laying out, didn't you? Yes, I did. I got sunburned too. Uh, yeah, I saw you scratching your shoulders. I was like, he's peeling. <laughs> oh man, he's... I got it good. I, and my uh, my brother's girlfriend, she's she's pretty white, and she like the first day. I looked at her, I was like, oh my gosh, she's in trouble. She got, you know, like someone with lighter skin. Oh, that's the way my wife is. Yeah. She yes, did, she yes, burns. yes, yes. Yeah. Same, same skin tone or whatnot. Yeah. She got fried. But I got fried too. I'm, I wear coconut oil. They're like SPF 30. I was like, Psh. you like, yeah, yeah. I put on you go coconut oil and all this and I got fried. So I haven't, I didn't take a shower for like two days because it would have hurt so bad. So I was just putting on. At least you don't have to think of you in the shower since you didn't take Oh, it. you heard that. <laughs> but right. yeah. I've been working out guys i've been working out oh my goodness no it's it is uh i'm looking forward to you coming i uh, appreciate having me on today all you 160,000 download listeners come just bring about a hundred thousand of you to uh, the growing green podcast and then we'll be we'll be riding the tails of the growing of the green industry podcast we'll be having a good old time yeah so please guys go over and support jeremiah's show the name of your show is growing, the growing green. green podcast how do you like that new thumbnail animated you? I love it. You did good. You did good, Paul. I, I didn't pay you for like three weeks because I never saw the invoice come slow through. Pay. You I probably thought I was ghosting you. Slow pay or slow pay? I'm like... <laughs> No, I well, I texted you and never got a reply. And then I was like, man, I got to get him paid. I never saw something. And then you like, I sent it two weeks ago. <laughs> so I felt bad. But I was all I, Jennings. Is he a slow payer or uh, no payer? Man? But you can't deny when as soon as you told me you sent it, I, it was paid in 30 seconds. As soon as I as soon as soon I pulled up the email. So, no, you did good on the thumbnail, Paul. Uh, so if you'd like our thumbnail, work that out for us and uh, did a great job there. So, yeah, Growing Green Podcast on all major platforms. We just, young in business is who we target. And that's, I think you got a lot of those listeners on on your show and there's just a lot in our industry and the industry is growing so much it's kind of what we talked about we're just trying to teach people how to help people and and how to grow successful businesses guys coming in there's just so much that you don't even know you don't even know if, if, if that makes sense there's stuff you don't know that you don't know so that's what we're trying to do is just help those people out cool well you guys can go ahead and support jeremiah in this community i, I was talking with megan and joey about this like it's so cool this community like we, we yeah it's, it's unlike no other and the, here's what you guys have to understand. The more successful Jeremiah Jennings is, the more successful I am. The more successful yeah. Brian Fullerton is. I mean, if Brian Fullerton becomes a multimillionaire one day, more than likely, it's going to elevate me. It's going to benefit me. There's always a bad apple out there. There's always somebody that might be like, who are you? You know, Paul who? You know what I mean? They, yeah. You don't know who, even, you know, Judas betrayed Jesus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but you can't sit there and calculate. I'm going to do everything I can. That's why I made you, you know, I made your thumbnails. Like, dude, your thumbnail's raggedy. Here, let's let's get it uh, better. You know what I mean? And it's like, if, if you support one another and, and build each other up, the, we all grow together. And so it's rare to have a community like this. It's so, it's so different. I, I, uh, I better not say that, but I've been in other industries where it's like so much strife and division and, and they're just like worn against each other and they're getting no traction. Yeah. And, and then over here, it's like everyone's an open book and we're all winning. And then people are, are coming into that ecosystem and just benefiting like crazy going so far, so fast because they're drinking this information in every day, listening to these various shows. It's really cool. Yeah. It's, it, the uh... Everybody, it's growing at rapid, rapid paces. People's companies and businesses and lives are growing faster than they're just getting boosted forward because of all the content they have to listen to. Guys are going way further and faster than me. And it's, it's oh yeah, a blessing to me. It's really, really cool to, to get to see that. And I also mentioned guys at the, the front of the broadcast, we we're talking about bookkeeping a little bit and how much that has transformed my business. I know Jeremiah's only got three profit and loss statements under the what is this? That's my Auburn cup. Okay. For all you YouTube watchers, we need to there you show, show it off for you. Jeremiah is brainwashed. It's SEC people. Oh my I don't I, I gave up on sports, man. I, I'm done. I was thinking the other day, like, what why did I waste so many years of my yeah. life watching Baker Mayfield throw interceptions or <laughs> <laughs> LeBron. Yeah, I don't know why you would do that. I mean, LeBron James. I used to watch the Cavs versus the Warriors today mm -hmm. the NBA Finals. Those are some insane. And I series. acted like a fool and put it on YouTube. I deleted all those videos. It's like how many hours of my life I spent watching football, basketball, all of this stuff. Yeah. And now I'm like, dude, I'm I'm trying to build a business. Like I I don't have time. I don't even have a TV in there. Maybe one day I'll get a TV if I get a wife and she's like. Let's watch a movie. I guess I'll have to get a TV. But until then, dude, I'm I'm not watching sports. I'm not getting sucked into all that. And I'm I'm building my business. Mm -hmm. And uh it's it's different, man. I've never been in a phrase like this in my life. Sports has always been such an 
integral part of my life. And uh, so anyway, I love it. I love sports, but I love the hustle and the grind too. There's there's going to come times in that you're, you're going to get everybody. I think everybody's going to get in a point of life where they put their head down and go to work. And I think you're doing that right now. And, and it's taking you a lot of places. Right. But let me add on to that too, Jeremiah, what you're doing with sports is different than what I was doing with sports. Like you're actually helping young men develop skills in life because you're coaching them. You, you're yeah. a basketball yeah. coach. That's different than sitting on the couch. You know, I'll probably never meet, what is it, 53 men on a football yeah, team? for sure. You know I mean? that, I'll probably never meet those 53 guys or maybe I'll meet a few of them. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say they're to my horn, but I, I got guys in the NFL that call me. And t- you know, they'll, they'll, they'll ask me about their yard. You know what I mean? <laughs> the other day, a guy is, you know, sitting there. He has Zoysia and he's going to get Bermuda. He's like, ah, it looks the same. I'm like, it's not the same, dude. It's not. <laughs> it's <laughs> not the same. Do not get it. Do not yeah. get Bermuda. Oh, he ended up getting it. Yeah, he's oh, like, no one's going to know. He's like, I know. Like, you can't put Bermuda. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but he's just. You might meet him. I mean, I met Russell Westbrook in, in Disneyland. So that oh, was really? Cool. Yeah, we like literally ate lunch together. Like he was like. Mean? the table the table over next day it was it was pretty cool what do you mean you ate lunch with him did you like sit and go to his table or yeah like we were we were sitting next to each other like our tables were next to each other oh that's cool. he was at one table and we were at the table next to him just just you recognize him oh yeah i recognize him he's like six six and walking around down there so he was he was really cool what'd you say to him I didn't really, you know, how Russell, I, I say he's really cool. You know, Russell Westbrook, how his attitudes is. So, and he was with his family and I didn't really want to bother him because he was, people had already gone up to him and asked him for pictures and he said no and stuff. Oh. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just sat there and I was like, how's it going? Oh, when people come up to you at GIE or Equip Expo and they're like, can I get a picture of you, Jeremiah? Are you going to say no? I'm going to say, yeah, get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> no. Be like Russell Westbrook. No, I would never do that. If people First, ever asked me for a picture, I would probably be like, wait, why, why do you? You want to Dude, I, I, so I went to a quit. It was called GIE back. And I just get in there. My, my podcast is in its infancy. I don't think yeah. it's going to recognize it. Lamont Hairston. He, he walks off. <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> of course, it was oh, Lamont. He's like, you think I get a picture with you, man? And I'm sitting there. My head got bigger than the room. And I was like, yeah, no problem, man. And he, I, I didn't know Lamont like I know him now. Yeah. And he sat there and I took a picture with him. And I was like, oh, man. My, my ego went exploded. And I was. I'm walking down the hallway. Like, Pull my picture, you know what I mean? So then, oh, uh, man. then a guy named Lawn Care Juggernaut. His, name, his real name's Kevin Hansen. Kevin Hansen, yeah. He walks up to me with a hat. He's like, hey, Paul. He's like, uh, you, you think you can sign my hat? And I was like, yeah, no problem. You know, and I, I had a Sharpie. And I oh, gave him an autograph to Lawn Care Juggernaut. Now he has like 400,000 YouTube subscribers. So I'm going to go up to Mission. Hey, hey, Kevin. Can you, you send my hat? My hat? <laughs> 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 that's good stuff yeah oh, no if anybody yeah. ever asked me for a picture i would be at first i'd be like taken back and then i'd be like of course absolutely yeah so. but that makes me mad russell was russell what's this guy think he is i'm not gonna take a picture with you yeah i kind of understood it because he was with his family and if you took a picture with everybody that i yeah, if you take a picture knows, from everyone, if you're an nba all-star yeah you know you're good you're, you're you're going out in public you yeah. know people are gonna ask you for a picture they're just anyway yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you. I'm on the same page. If, if you're wow. rent the park out or something, or go at a time when nobody's gonna be there, don't go on Sunday when it's packed and all the tourists are there and stuff. So, but yeah, it was cool. He was it was cool getting to hang out with him. So you never know, you might be somebody. But the, where we were going with that is, yes, you're probably never gonna meet half the people you sit there and spend hours and hours watching on TV. Half of those guys you're never gonna meet. And 20 years from now, it's not gonna matter who won the game. I don't remember who won the the NBA championship three years ago. That's the, like, I mean, it doesn't right. change. And, and, it doesn't change your life. 25 years from now, you're not going to remember either. But if you actually build a business and have financial freedom and you could take your family to the beach and you'll you'll remember those or play basketball with your son, that's different than watching a bunch of grown men chase a pigskin wearing tights or or shoot a ball through hoop or whatever. But anyway, I got to settle down because I'm on a batch podcasting recording day and I got a whole bunch more still to go today, Jeremiah. And uh, my voice you going live started. tonight? Not live, but um, because it's a rain just day. Just keep recording them. Yeah, I just trying to get as much in as I can because uh, rain days are my best friend because people are available in the southeast region. So I'm just kind of making my rounds. All right, sounds good, man. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Everybody yes, find us at Growing Green Landscapes on Instagram. All right, there you go. Go check out Jeremiah, guys, and I'll see you soon, brother. Yes, sir. See you later.